Welcome to a noob's guide to Say my name! Say my name! Grimgore Ironhide. This is Grimgore, the largest and angriest greenskin in all of Warhammer. When you think of a typical fantasy orc warlord, it's probably Grimgore. He's heavily armed, heavily armed, and heavily armored. Grimgore is also the single strongest piece of evidence that all of Warhammer is a multiverse, because depending on who you ask, he either headbutted Archeon into unconsciousness, made the demigod chop his head off just to stop him, or kicked the Ever Chosen in the nuts so hard he entered orbit. But whichever lore you source for his power level, Grimgore sets the bar that everyone else in Warhammer must limbo under. In this video, we'll go over Grimgore Ironhide's playstyle in Total War Warhammer 3 and the lore that inspired it. Grimgore plays exactly like the soccer hooligan enforcers that inspired Games Workshop to create him. Point him at the enemy and watch as he crushes them from existence while only suffering a red card. If you're feeling especially adventurous, you can add a gang of his Black Orc buddies and bang away at them like that one meme you swear you don't know the origin of. As Grimgore excels at moving, raiding, and punching things with his hyper-pigmented pals. Dwarfs are stubborn, elves are agile, and humans can adapt to damn near anything. But that's all just compensating for repeatedly being punched in the face by the mindless savagery that is a greenskin. Thanks to nearly a decade of DLC, Grimgore's faction has all the tools necessary to help with any opponent you may come across. But when your defining attribute is cunning brutality, throwing more large, angry bodies at the problem is still a valid strategy. Grimgore comes in like a wrecking ball wherever he goes, destroying anything in his path. Weird prophecies about being the one true git to unite all greenskins. The fan-voted Storm of Chaos plotline, where Archeon was supposed to win. And of course, every Cathayan dragon butthole in the end times. Though probably not in the way you're thinking of. Tall, dark, and ugly here multiplies through spores, so he'd be smoother than a Ken doll downstairs and twice as angry for it. All orcs in Warhammer are technically an intelligent species of fungus. How intelligent is up for debate and varies wildly between the individual. If smart mold sounds dumb to you, well then let me introduce Physerum polycephalum. Like the greenskins, they branched off from the evolutionary tree before animals split from plants and fungi, so they don't quite fit into either group. Some live as individuals but come together and work as a group when the conditions are right. They can grow to be several feet across, can sense food, chase it down, plan attacks, reform when torn apart, and teach other goops any devious tricks they pick up. They're also nigh unkillable and can regenerate from one tiny spore. Sound familiar yet? Welcome to the fungal infection from hell that is the Greenskin Army. It's the jock itch with no cure except the sweet embrace of the Emperor's holy hellfire. Grimgore is the largest, meanest, and most volatile of these monstrosities to ever exist, the product of experimentation by a heavily bearded weirdo living in a spiky black tower, which seems to be the main requirement for wizardry in a fantasy universe. The Chaos Dwarfs were tired of their greenskinned slaves fighting amongst themselves and having the audacity to die when overworked, so they created the stronger, tougher Black Orcs to replace them. This experiment was an epic failure, or huge success depending on your skin color, as a mighty green Sporticus rose from the subjugated horde to violently throw off the shackles of their masters, and then strangle them with them. The wholesale collapse of Dalbizar society was only averted by the sudden yet inevitable betrayal of the Hobgoblins. The slave uprising was crushed, and the Black Orcs who weren't killed disappeared into the wilderness like a daypacker into the Mojave. And that's where our story really begins. Hither came Grimgore, the Black Orc, green-skinned, one-eyed, axe in hand, a thief, a reaver, a slayer, to tread the jeweled thrones of the earth under his pleaded feet. Grimgore staggered out of the blasted lands, leading a group of fierce Black Orcs who had become known as De Immortals. Second in strength only to Grimgore himself, these Black Orc bodyguards have never been defeated in battle. The Black Orcs your army starts with have a special Immortals banner to represent this, and using the Greenskin Scrap mechanic, Grimgore can equip any Black Orc with Immortals armor, letting you bring a right proper crumping and curve stomping to anyone in your path. Some say there's no way that Grimgore could be the same Black Orc from the Uprising. That would make him hundreds of years old. 
But like crocodiles and sharks, orcs just get bigger as they age, and Grimgor is the biggest orc on record. His name, Grimgor, is also dwarfish Kazalid for the unyielding wild beast, which translates to human as, oh sweet lord no, please anything but him. Grimgor doesn't use any magic in battle. He doesn't need to, as he has a melee-focused skill path and abs that both cut so deeply they sell postcards of it in Arizona. So that when you max out Grimgor's red skill line, you'll walk into every battle like, You can't harm me. Do you not know who I am? He must not know who I am. I'm the juggernaut bitch. I'm going to hit you with your own pill. And if you recognize that video, friendly reminder, it's time for your first prostate inspection. Grimgor's role as a hulking, iron-hided juggernaut is only added to by his unique quest items. His axe, Gitsnick, which helps to snick bigger gits, and the blood-forged armor, which was crafted in the former dwarf hold that is now Red Eye Mountain, where the armor's steel was quenched in the blood of dwarf runesmiths. This didn't actually make it any stronger, but like rhinestones on a denim jacket, it got the attention he wanted. The blood-forged armor also gives him an on-use ability, which lets you clear the area around Grimgore with a bloody explosion normally confined to toilets after Taco Bell lunches. Which also brings us to the big black behemoth's one problem. You can only get out of battle by walking away at a brisk pace. There's only so many squats and sprints you can do to speed up when all of your lower muscle mass goes to carrying a tank's worth of armor. So take the hint and stick him where the fighting is thickest. And when you need to catch someone, use the Your Next ability. It temporarily slows down enemy lords and reduces their defense and attack, letting you catch those fleet-footed fops and show them that while dwarfs are dangerous over short distances, orcs are just dangerous. Grimgor's leadership, bravery, and martial prowess are more than impressive considering he's a complete and utter git. The full orc roster is awash for mobility options to help hold enemies in place while Grimgor plods his way over to them. But for the thematic player among you, you'll want to lean into his faction's speciality of black orcs. Because you can start the game able to recruit black orc big bosses. Your WA armies have a chance to contain black orcs, and you upkeep them for less. And all your other effects and skills get these black orcs to be tougher, stronger, and meaner than any other greenskin leader can field. A slow-moving spiked steamroller isn't the most glamorous playstyle, but by gork does it get the job done. As of Patch 4.2, you'll begin Grimgor's campaign in the Mountains of Morn, where the nearby settlement of Carrick Vrag has the unique Big Fort Monument, which lets you, guess what, give Grimgor a pretty princess unicorn mount. No, it's buff black orcs. But this starting position does face you with an unfortunate dilemma. Which empire will you crush first? But push it too far, and even orcs can become tired of fighting. Though that's just in the physical sense. Too exhausted to even lift their arms. But if you stand too close, they will try and bite your ankles. Building Grimgore's faction around black orcs requires you to get to the mid and late game to fully use them. But when you do, Grimgore becomes so powerful, you can start the battle, put your dog in the chair, walk away and make yourself a burrito, and still win. Because just like in real life, if you encounter a dude who wears a belt buckle with his own face on it, he's undoubtedly an asshole. But when his giant shoulders can't fit through the doorway, you keep that opinion to yourself, because that man is dangerous. And this has been a noob's guide to Grimgore Ironhide.